Hello everyone. Let's find out what is the total energy in a simple harmonic motion. Now here we talk about mechanical energy. Now the mechanical energy or total energy is equal to sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. That is what is the total energy. Understand this. We can take an example of a simple harmonic motion. There are many examples of simple harmonic motion. Here we have taken example of a simple pendulum. A simple pendulum contains a string to which a small bob is attached, a small mask is attached and this pendulum is pulled between two extreme ends. So if it is pulled between an end somewhere here let to oscillate say we'll call this as point c this is point a now this would oscillate between the two extreme ends the pendulum would oscillate between the points a and points c or points a and points b crossing the point c it oscillate like this in this case keep in mind that it would be a simple harmonic motion only for small displacements not for large displacements otherwise it becomes just an oscillatory motion not a simple harmonic motion so the pendulum oscillates between points a and then points b crossing point c we can take an example of spring also so wherever we take the idea would be same if you have a spring about its mean position like this the spring could be vertical or horizontal here it is taken as vertical suppose if we apply a force f onto the spring the spring would be expanded if we apply force f and then leave it the spring may oscillate between the two points to this oscillate between this point this extreme end to and like this so spring may oscillate between the two extreme ends we we'll call this say C, A and then B. Basically in this case C, B or C, A the same as C, B. So keep that in mind. At any point, at any extreme ends, we saw that in case of a simple harmonic motion, the extreme end velocity should be zero. So at that point, it will have total energy would be only potential energy. When the particle comes to point C, it will be just kinetic energy and then when the particle goes to its point B kinetic energy will decrease potential energy will increase we will understand this mathematically also but for now we can define saying that total energy is equal to sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy so let's derive one by one let's first find what is the system's potential energy understand this recall that if we have any object for example think of a spring itself a spring is in its main position like this suppose if we pull the spring to a small displacement we're pulling it from here we're pulling it from this point to this extreme end we're pulling continuously suppose imagine that the spring is somewhere here this is what is the position of the body it's been expanded like this so it has gone by some distance let us call this as some y so y is a displacement keep in mind that y doesn't indicate y axis alone y means some displacement you don't always think that y should be only vertical here i've taken y along the horizontal but the basic idea is y stands for displacement whether called as y or x or z whatever you call it only means displacement so we're taken y only as we did earlier now from here suppose from here if you move a small distance we moved from here to some point like this we move small distance like this let me call this as dy so in this case we are applying a force and we move by small displacement so in this case the work done we call as dw so dw is the work done for small displacement 
that work done is equal to f applied into dy where f applied is this applied force which you call as fa it's applied force the force is applied to overcome external force or the, the overcome internal force in this case the applied force to overcome the restraining force of spring recall that for a spring the restraining force is given as minus k into y where k is called as spring constant it's called as a spring constant remember we also learnt that the force law for simple harmonic motion is given as f is equal to minus k into y the form is same but there this k was a force constant now spring constant is a kind of force constant force constant is a general term very general term there could be many cases there could be a case where an atom is vibrating there could be a case where something is moving in a pipe we could have infinite examples of simple harmonic motion in all the cases the form is same only one example of it is only the spring force so even though the form looks similar but spring force is an example of a simple harmonic motion so in this case if you need to apply a force this force is applied to overcome the spring force which means f a is equal to a into y in terms of magnitude therefore dw is equal to k into y into dy now dy is a small displacement and dw is a small work done but we want total work done we want to find the work done to go from reference point reference level say c to reference level say a we want to find how much is gone till here to understand this we can differentiate it so we can say the total work done is equal to k into y into dv and then we put the limits as 0 to y so i put the limit as y only to ensure for some displacement if you take it from this to this extreme end then that becomes amplitude of it so we find general formula first so this work done is equal to k comes out and what remains is 0 to y y into dv keep in mind that here y is just taken as a limit just like at some number we could take it for example say 0 to 2 meter y becomes 2 meter it's a limit to it if you integrate this it becomes k into its y power 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 limits are 0 to y that is k by 2 comes out because 1 plus 1 is 2 what remains is y square limits are 0 to y and putting it back it will be k by 2 it will be upper limit minus lower limit it's the work done so therefore the work done is equal to half k y square but the work done is seen as potential energy because it's a conservative force therefore potential energy is equal to half into k into y square this is called as potential energy of a simple harmonic motion now to understand the meaning of the equation we can plot a graph here we can plot a graph of say potential energy versus the displacement so what we got from there is we got that potential energy is equal to half into a into y square keep in mind that even though this expression is derived for a spring force the same thing could be done for any kind of motion i do an example of a spring force justify this with the same form whether it is a simple pendulum whatever it is the form remains same so don't assume that this is only for a simple pendulum or only for a spring force is true for any kind of a simple harmonic motion so what you get in this case is that if you draw a graph of potential energy versus y and mathematically from this graph the limits of y could be plus a to minus a that is if you look at this example let's put something else here because a would mean amplitude call point p and then point q now the pendulum would oscillate between point Q to some point here, call it as point R. 
So it will go between these two points. It oscillates like this. P is the mean position. It goes between these two points. So at this end, when it goes to point Q, Y becomes plus A. When it goes to point R, Y becomes minus A. That's the example taken here. So if you look at this, when the particle moves from point P towards point Q, Y is increasing. So here energy will increase, but it's a square term. It's like a parabola. The graph would be something of this kind. It's not linear. It is increasing like this. It's increasing like this and goes like this. Once the particle goes to point Q, then Y becomes maximum. So this corresponds to plus A. And similarly, when the particle is at point P, then Y is 0. So when the particle comes back, Y is decreasing. At point P, Y is 0, which means at the point P, potential energy is 0. When the particle moves towards point R, Y becomes negative, but it's a square term here. So, even though y is negative, we are squaring it because of which the potential energy becomes negative or positive only because squaring it. Again, when the particle moves from point P towards point R, it would increase like this. It goes like this. So, this corresponds to minus A. The particle comes back from point R towards point P. Potential energy will decrease the point O it again becomes zero. So this is the form for potential energy. It becomes at this point. If you look at the value here, if you plot a graph of this, this is a peak value, and that would be half k into a square. That is because at this point y is equal to a. So this is the maximum energy of the potential energy. That will be half k into a square. Similarly, let's find out an expression for kinetic energy. To understand this, let's recall that kinetic energy is equal to half into m into v square. Now, v was equal to omega into under root of a square minus y square, which been proved. If you square this, then kinetic energy is half, it is m, v square is this whole square now, it becomes omega square, a square minus y square. This is what is kinetic energy, but recall that m omega square is nothing but k. We defined k as k was the force constant that is equal to m into omega square. Therefore, kinetic energy is equal to half k into a square minus y square. So this is the form for kinetic energy. Even this depends on y. Now in this case, again the limits of y could be plus a to minus a. If y, if y is equal to plus a or minus a, Squaring it, in that case kinetic energy becomes zero. If y is equal to zero, kinetic energy is maximum. That becomes half into k into a square. Here also it's a parabola, but it's an inverted parabola because of this factor a square. If you plot a graph for it, it's a parabolic graph only which is inverted. So at the mean position. And again the maximum that is half into k into a square we saw it also we saw in case of simple harmonic motion that at the mean position the velocity will be maximum this is the mean position say point p we call this r and then q at the mean position or we call as o the velocity is maximum and the particle moves away from o either towards q or towards r velocity will decrease which means when y is increasing, velocity will decrease. It will decrease and then when the particle goes to extreme position, y becomes a. In that case, kinetic energy becomes 0. When the particle again comes towards a point. Example, imagine particle goes from point q 
from point Q to which point O, velocity will increase, which means A1 kinetic energy will increase like this. When the particle crosses point O and goes towards point R, velocity will decrease as seen here, it's a parabolic decrease. When the particle goes to point R, kinetic energy becomes zero. So this is the graph for kinetic energy versus displacement. Now we need to find total energy. So total energy is given by sum of potential plus kinetic energy. Now, recall what was potential energy. That is given as half k into y square. Kinetic energy was equal to half k into a square minus y square. If you add these two together, then the total energy, we write E or some books write like TE also, the total energy is equal to half k into y square plus half k into a square minus y square. Total energy is half k y square, we will open this bracket, plus half k a square minus half k y square and this term gets cancelled. Finally what remains is the total energy which we call as capital E that is equal to half into k into a square but we learnt that k is equal to m into omega square and the k is a force constant. If we put that back here we get E is equal to half m omega square into a square. So this also is other form of total energy. Now observe carefully here that in case of total energy it's a constant because half is a constant for a given motion for a given half simple harmonic motion even k is a constant even a is a constant which means the total energy is always a constant. We can prove that by using graph also. Let's look at the two graphs superimposed here. The plotting graph for total energy which means we have both the graphs of kinetic and kinetic energy and then potential energy is being superimposed here then what we get would be something of this kind. This is the graph for kinetic energy the blue one and the broken line is for potential energy. At any point the sum of total energy remains always a constant. To understand this let's recall let's assume that A is equal to for example say 5 meter. Let's take the example of a spring only where the spring has as a mean position somewhere here. The spring moves between two extreme ends. It moves between this extreme ends and this extreme end such that from the mean position this distance is equal to 5 meter. This also is equal to 5 meter. So the amplitude is 5 meter. Now suppose let's take a case where we want to find somewhere here. The particle is at somewhere here it is. This is the mass somewhere here. In that case what is energy? So in this case it will have both kinetic plus potential energy. So if you take a point somewhere here say you want to find for say 2 meter. So from here 2 meter it will have both energies. So if you look at this it has this much of potential energy plus it has this much of kinetic energy the total of this would be the total energy is always a constant. To make some sense out of it if total energy is say for example 50 joule so at all the points it will be 50 joule only. At the extreme ends for example in this case if we call this as say some point R and Q and O when the mass is at Q so it will be at rest temporarily because it will turn and go back. At this point velocity is 0 which means at this point kinetic energy is 0. At this point the total energy is nothing but only its potential energy which is the same as 50 joule. When the particle goes back it's somewhere here. When the particle goes back in that case kinetic energy will increase, potential energy will decrease but sum of kinetic and potential will be still be 50 joule only. 
and the particle goes to the e mean position in that case y is 0 if y is 0 means here at the mean position here potential energy is equal to 0 it becomes completely kinetic energy but still the total of this will be 50 joule only so at every point the sum of kinetic and potential energy is 50 joule whether it is completely kinetic or complete potential or mixture of it depends on where the particle is when the particle is at the extreme ends it's completely potential energy when the particle goes towards the mean position in that case kinetic energy will increase potential energy will decrease when the particle crosses the mean position and goes to an extreme end in this part of the graph here kinetic energy will decrease but potential energy will increase so this is the equation for a simple harmonic motion with total energy being always a constant.